River, come here. Come here. Come here. So she, she's the other catalyst. Come on. Come on. And she's just going to hang out there. <laughs> but we started that adoption process and we said, you know what, we should go to India. We should check this thing out and, and see what it's all about. And just, you know, through a mutual friend, Mr. Daniel Benton, who's running sound back there, he has a radio station called Red Hot Radio, Texas Red Hot Radio. Yeah. And I had done some things with Texas Red Hot Radio, and, uh, and here she comes. I don't need a phone here. I don't know what you're doing there. Anyway, and, and he said, you should go with my pastor, man. He goes over there all the time. They've got orphans. It's just crazy, man. You should do it. And I said, okay. So he set up a, a meeting with, with Pastor Troy. We came over here and sat in his office, and Troy was like, hey, dude. I know you, man. I've seen you, man. Hey. I can't believe it's you, man. So if any of you talk to Pastor Troy, you know I'm not exaggerating at all. And he said, hey, man, I got this idea, man. I want to do a concert. It was the first thing that came out of his mouth outside of like, hey, man, hey, dude. He was like, hey, man, I'm going to do this concert for 100,000 people in the middle of India, man. We're going to bust all these people in. You down with something like that? I was like, yeah, totally. And he was like, well, this trip's not going to be that. This trip, this trip, we're just going to go over, we're going to love on some babies, man, we're going to hug on people, we're going to kiss on people, you're going to hug lepers, man, they might not have ever had a hug in their life, and then you're going to sleep in the orphans, man, there's going to be babies climbing all over you, are you cool with that? And we're like, yeah, that's what we're after, that's what we want. So he took us over there, and it was exactly what he said. I mean, at 6 a.m. every morning, it was like, this little, this little girl would come in and sweep our room at 6 a.m., and she like, you know, want to talk to us. showed up in such a way that just changed Katie and I, it changed our life. And, you know, we got this little girl, we started another adoption process, we went down to Houston, and on our way back from Houston, well, I should tell this like it was, I was laying in bed watching a video of these little Indian babies dancing around, and this guy named Georgian Barnoff was playing fiddle in the middle of them, and I said, man, I want to do that. And, and, and then I showed it to Katie, and she said, we should just start our own orphanage. And then a week later, we were driving on our way back from Houston doing this ministry thing in Houston, coming back, and, and she goes, hey, Ernest is going to help us uh, start the orphanage. And I was like, we're doing that. We are doing that. <laughs> and then there you go. That's how she rolls. My, my wife and Pastor Troy's wife, they're a lot alike, you know. We totally outkicked our coverage. I'll just say that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the process is just... It's changed our life because we, we went over to, to our little village. Uh, it's called Madam Pali. It's about an hour and a half outside of Hyderabad, India. And there's 3,000 people that live in a village that have, they draw water from three wells. You know, they, they have like a quarter of the village has electricity. Nobody else has electricity. Half of the adults have never seen nor have they, they don't, they don't wear shoes because they've never had shoes. You know, I talk to women there that their kids live in a government hostel right now that are, you know, a widow. Because widows in India, they're damaged goods. Men won't go near them, okay? And this woman, she worked 12 hours a day, six days a week, laying bricks, and she made a dollar fifty a day. Yeah. Makes minimum wage sound real good. And, and, she, and the cost of living, you know, it's not that much different. We, you have this idea that, oh, it's third world. It's not a third world country. It's not. But people are just, you know, they're living a crazy existence over there. And the thing is, is none of them know Jesus. None of them. There's 3,000 people in that village and not one of them is a Christian. Not one. So we get the opportunity to go over there and feed people, love on people, and show them Jesus. Is that still... Are you laughing at her? <laughs> 
Now this is this is this is absolutely the grace of God because this baby was yes listen this baby lived the first eighteen months of her life she's two and a half now but she lived the first eighteen months of her life in an in institution in an orphanage in India her mother left her on the police station steps when she was six days old because she had cleft lip and pallid in it and we don't know to what extent her mother had but we know that her mother did have AIDS. We do know that because there was some of that stuff in her blood that they could see, but she's not, she's HIV negative, but yeah, thank God. But she's the most unbelievable little girl. I mean, the fact that she lived in an orphanage for 18 months and she's standing up here in front of all y'all and she could care less what you think about, but that doesn't happen, okay? And, and God just, she is a grace on her life and... This is just something else. So, Ruru, will you go back to Mama? Go see Mama. Bye. 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 I know you can't get into a concert, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play music. But You have to know the heart behind why we're doing this. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Because here's the thing. I got to play music. I played music for 10 years of my life in bars and clubs all over Texas, south, here, there, everywhere. And, and I enjoyed it. Music is my passion. But when God pulled me out of that, I didn't know that I would ever go back and do it again. Because I, I just surrendered my life to Jesus and it was about whatever you want me to do, man, I'll do it. If you never want me to sing again, okay, fine. I'll, I'll just go tell people about Jesus. Because if you are what you say you are in this word right here, then it's worth everybody knowing. And so, and so that's what I decided to do. And then God has let me do this. I always, you know, it's such a blessing. Next week I'm playing in a bar. I'm playing in a bar that when tickets went on sale, sold out in 90 seconds. I played in that exact same bar four years ago in front of about as many people as are in this front row. <laughs> That's the grace of God. That is the grace of God. That is not me. There are places calling me, wanting to give me gigs and give me money that I couldn't have, I couldn't have begged them to pay. I couldn't have paid them to pay me as much as they're paying me now. That is the grace of God. And, and it all goes over there. It all goes over there because they deserve it. And because they deserve a chance. Girls like Ruby, they didn't have a chance. She didn't have a chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I'm not I'm not some great special dude. I just I love Jesus. And I just I read that Bible and I do what he tells me to do. And if you do that, it's amazing what God will do in your life. I was just telling Pastor Troy I'm going to Zambia on April twenty eighth. I'm playing in a stadium in front of sixty thousand people. Oh my god. <laughs> that is the grace of God. <laughs> I'm going to play you this song. 